Blog Talk Radio. Well, good morning again, and welcome to another episode of Financing Your Business Today. I'm Tim Jacquet, your host. Our focus today topic is commercial insurance and the importance of it. I have a, a special guest today, Roscoe Mason. Roscoe, you there with uh, Harrison and Associates? Yes, sir. I sure am. Okay. He's a commercial account, uh, property casualty agent with Harrison and Associates. Good morning. Morning. Okay, I guess to begin with, this, give us a little background of who you are. Well, my name is Roscoe Mason. I'm the commercial insurance manager for Harriston and Associates Insurance Agency in Spring, Texas. I've been with the agency about six years, and my primary focus is property and casualty for small, medium to moderate sized businesses. Wow. Can you tell us what the importance of really commercial insurance in general? Well, commercial insurance protects the business owner from the possibility of a lawsuit in the event of a loss. And what that means is any business owner that has a professional capability or a clientele that's looking at his expertise and performing his job has the possible ability of having a loss or lawsuit aimed against him in the event that he doesn't perform up to the expectations. Okay. So, it protects the liability for property, the owners, and so forth. So the liability meaning if someone slanders someone or if a product fell or if right. someone's coming in your property and slipped down? Sure. I mean, it protects against the possibility of bodily injury and property damage for the insured. And that's, that's covered under the general liability policy. Okay. So kind of give us, I guess, a detail of what the liability peril is. For an insurance, they, um, for a person who has trying to get insurance for their small business. Okay. In most instances, a business owner is looking for something to protect himself in the event that he goes out to get a job. The general liability okay. aspect of it would protect him in the event that he's performing a job. Somebody comes on the location, maybe slips and falls, is injured, or even as a result of his work, damage has occurred on their property. And that's what the general liability portion of the policy of the insurance coverage would cover. Okay. And with the, in a nutshell, with the liability itself, is it a foldable product? I mean, you have to get this large type of insurance coverage, but are you, can you buy separate portions of it to protect you or a minimal portion? Well, the general liability policy would basically have several uh, proponents. You'd have liability protection against property damage personal injury, products and completed operations, and medical expenses. Okay. Now, most of the time when a business person comes in to buy general liability, they'll be looking at something in the area of a million dollars per occurrence. There are lesser coverages available. However, when a business owner is going out to secure maybe a contract with a city or a larger company, Primarily, they're looking for the business owner to have at least a million to two million dollars coverage. Okay. Now that doesn't indicate that the, that the policy is going to cost that. That's just the limit of liability that the company will be looking for. So they're going to have at least a minimum of a million dollars in coverage. Um, yes, um, they want to. I mean, that would give you the most protection. Okay. And when it comes to the coverages itself, is mainly is protecting the like for example the city and protecting the owner. In the event something happens, it does it. You know, it's regarding their products hurting someone, or if something gets someone falls and it hurts themselves on the site, or something like that. Or yeah, I mean all of those. I mean all of those things are part of the coverage. And say, for instance, if a business owner is trying to get a contract with the city, okay. Let's say they're trying to get a contract with the city. When they go in, the contract is going to stipulate that they have coverages at least rising to the minimum level that's acceptable 
and they'll outline the business owner will need general liability, mm-hmm. workers' comp, auto liability, and even they may even require an umbrella policy. Now, that's not in all cases, but in most cases, they'll be looking for those products. And in addition, they'll be looking to be added as an additional insured on the policy, which means in the event of a loss or an injury or property damage, they want to make sure that they're added onto the policy and they'll be covered and protected against a lawsuit. Oh, wow. Okay. So if it's a smaller business owner, I mean, you mentioned general auto, umbrella, and workers' comp. Mm-hmm. Can you talk about the difference between all four of those particular property insurance? Sure. Okay. Your general liability policy is basically a policy set in, in a place to protect the business owner against loss from property damage or bodily injury. Okay. Now, when on the automobile auto liability portion of it, when they go to a vendor and they ask them to have something like hired and non-owned insurance, that can also be a part of the general liability coverage. Not in all instances, but it can be a part of general liability coverage. And basically what that's saying is that if the business owner has an automobile and use it in the course of their business and goes on the vendor's are the contract owners the site, then they are covered in the event of an accident. Okay. Now, the other part of it is the workman's comp. And, of course, Texas is a state that doesn't require you to have workman's comp. Oh, wow. But your vendors could require you to have workman's comp. And workman's comp, just like general liability, protects the business owner in the event of a law. Now, if you've got an employee that's working for you mm-hmm. on a contract and they are injured, the only place that they can go to to seek relief is to you personally or to the vendor that you uh, have a contract with. Now, to prevent the possibility of a lawsuit, because in most cases, the business owner is not prepared to pay a large medical bill. So to protect himself from that liability, he gets workers' comp in place. Because in the event of an injury, that injured person is going to be looking for some area to be compensated for his injuries. And if you don't have the financial capability of taking care of those injuries, it's best to have a workers' comp policy. Okay. So if they don't have a workers' comp policy, and for example, if the employee hurts themselves, Mm -hmm. what happens then? If they, so if the fault's back to the insurance company, well, personal insurance? If, yeah, it's going to fall on the employees. If they have personal insurance in place, it will fall on them. But okay. as we both know, if a person is working for you, no matter what the situation is or what they say or what you've explained to them, if they're injured, they're going to eventually say, well, you know what? I was working for you, and because I was working for you, that caused my injury. I need to be compensated. Now, without workers' comp in place, you're open to a lawsuit. And in reality, you could possibly lose your business because that person is going to be looking for compensation. And we know this is an era where people are very prone to go to a lawyer. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a remedy in place to handle that situation, it could lead to financial ruin. Okay. But that's right. If you're a corporation, you're protected. If you're a personal owner who is a DB sole proprietor, then that's really going to go after you and your personal assets versus the person is just go to that. So... In a case with people with health insurance, mm-hmm. the company don't have any workers' compensation. Mm-hmm. So will insurance companies, after receiving this bill and caring for this person, will go after the business owner if the insurer, whatever the person who's insured, says that I got hurt on the job? Yeah, I mean that's that's the only place they can go. That that's the natural uh, course of action to take because somebody's got to be responsible, okay. and and the responsibility. In most cases, it's going to fall on the business owner. And it's just all, you just really just need to get workman's compensation if you have any employees working for you. It would be smart to have workers' comp in place. Now, I know many people say they can't afford it, okay, and that's a true circumstance for a lot of people. But you have to look at the possibility if you have a business, can you afford not to have it mm-hmm. as opposed to can you afford to have it? In most cases, you can't afford not to have it if you if you're actually in business. Okay. Now, for example, or does the state, since we don't require, it, have some kind of drum pool of insurance for workers' comp to help small businesses? 
It sure do. I mean, you have the te- the workman's comp pool is called Texas Mutual, and they will cater to small businesses who need workman's comp. And there are a number of co- companies available that would also cater to small businesses. And in a lot of cases, depending on the risk and what you do, okay. the cost is not that expensive. Now, if you have a high-risk type of uh, business, something like roofers, roofers, contractors, occupations, that were electricians and things like that, where there is a high possibility of injury, then workers' comp can be kind of, the cost can be kind of nominal. Okay, because the liability of them hurting themselves increases. Right, right. And so, you know, it's rated on a factor of basically of the possibility of liability. Say, let's, let's look at this. Say an ambulance company, a mm-hmm. company that owns ambulances. Okay, now if they want workers' comp, then it's going to be the insurance company's going to look at the risk like this. Okay, your company transports people. Okay, in the event that somebody gets hurt while you're transporting them, then the possibility of the cost being higher than normal is really uh, great. So they assign a rate based on that. Okay. And that's what drives the cost up. Okay. So, so if you say... Somebody that's an electrician, as opposed to somebody who's typing an office worker. Mm-hmm. The rate for the two risks is going to be uh, it's going to be really varied there, because an office worker is going to have less likelihood of being hurt than a person who is maybe an electrician on a scaffold, or someone who's working on a scaffold on a twenty-story building. Okay, and for a small business, another small business owner question: For example, if they're working out of a home. Mm-hmm. Most people will have homeowners insurance, right. but can they? Well, twofold question: If they're working out at home, they have additional protection there anyway mm-hmm. with homeowners policy. Right. Uh, should that person get an endorsement as well to their policy, or get a separate policy to protect them if they? And a lot of contractors, not picking the contractors, work out mm-hmm. of their homes. You know, people that does tile work, construction, and they work out of their home mm-hmm. or anything in their garage. Yeah, the homeowner's policy, is that enough to protect them or just only protect them on that site? No, a homeowner's policy would not be... You have some endorsement that you can apply to a homeowner's policy to protect you as a business owner, but that's for risk that, like somebody's doing sewing out of their home, okay. you know, they're making up Christmas cards or something like that, something that has a small amount of liability. Okay. A lot of business owners work out of their home. However, the requirements of their job require them are still going to require them to have commercial insurance. And in most cases, they are able to get by with just the general liability policy. And in a lot of cases, say like an electrician, for example, that works out of his home, and he goes on a job with a company, they're going to require him to have at least general liability. Okay. Now, for an electrician... The general liability cost could he may be able to get by with a what we call a minimal premium, um, okay. and that minimal premium could be somewhere like a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars a year mm-hmm. for general liability. So he would be able to get by with that working out of his home, and that's not a high, it's not an excessive cost, you know, but it definitely will not apply. His homeowner's insurance wouldn't be able to cover him. He okay. definitely have to get a general liability policy. Okay, and what about for? Uh Crimes uh, for a business uh, does it protect from a man, Protect for for theft of products or for burglary or for robbery? Does well, it- your general liability policy would not. However, you have uh, policies such as the package policy mm-hmm. or the business owner policy, which protect you on that from those occurrences. And simply because a package or a business owner policy would also cover property which is your personal property or your contents or the property of others. Okay. And that will cover you in the event of a theft. And the various endorsements are on the policy would cover a number of things, like the business owner policy could protect you, some of your fine arts. If you have paintings on your wall, it could protect your valuable papers. It could protect your plants. It could protect you against counterfeit money, you know, things like that. Those aspects are included in a business owner's policy. Okay, so you have your commercial policy, you have mm-hmm. your workman's comp, 
Now you said a business owner policy is separate? Yeah, yeah. well, it's, it contains more coverage. Okay. So, see, your general liability policy is, is a basic policy to protect you okay. from liability loss. Okay. Your business owner policy protects you from not only liability losses, but property losses. Okay. So you're a business property bop. <laughs> right, your bop. That's what, that's what it's called. Exactly. That's what it's called, a bop. bop oh, okay. Policy. I'm just kind of starting it out. Okay. <laughs> so you can get coverage from your, you already have your liability, now cover your liability. You have another policy that's going to cover workman's comp and your bop policy, business owner, business owner, property insurance. That can cover uh, theft, property, embezzlement, flood. Well, not flood. Flood not is a flood. different. That's a different animal. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about flood for business owners, especially for Houston. Sure, sure. Well, your flood, your flood coverage will protect. Of course, it's going to protect you against flood, and that there is a well, it's not called a pool of resources available. But there are flood coverages available from the government that will protect the business owners, and those. Coverages depend on your size of your business. If you're operating out of your home, you just can buy a standard flood uh, policy, and those the cost is very nominal on that. Or if you have a small business, you can buy a standard flood policy. The cost is very nominal on that. And basically, be worth it if you do a little research, find out if your business is located in a floodplain or a flood zone, and if it is, you try to get the coverage accordingly, so okay. you won't be caught. In that instance, where there's a flood that occurs every 20 years and it's known, and you won't be cut caught uh, without coverage. And sometimes, in some cases, like I know Houston and some other lying areas, you know, like New Orleans, some places in Louisiana, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. there might not flood in that area for like ever. Right. And I remember the Great Flood a few years ago in Houston mm-hmm. with some kind of thunderstorms, and I can't remember, it was about six or seven years ago. And it was oh. just constant rain, and even sure. the medical center got flooded. So even that, if you lived in a medical center and you never had this issue before, it's best that you would protect yourself if you know the that particular region floods to get that policy. Right. And see, like, with floods, like, well, let's just talk about in Houston. People are with floods. You have places that have, like, a 20-year flood. What they call them, like, a 20-year flood zone, flood plain. Okay. Yeah. And it's only expected the record only shows it, it may flood in that area about once every 20 years. Okay. okay, but in between that 20 year period, people's their precautionary instincts get lax because they have not seen a flood or they may not even be familiar with it. Mm-hmm. So, when you bring up the case where okay, you need flood insurance, they say, Well, I've been here seven years and it's never flooded, right? Or I've been here 10 years and it's never flooded. Okay, but that does not mean that the area has not flooded before. Now, in cases like that, most people let the flood insurance, they just let it go. Okay. But when you have like that flood instance you were talking about, I'm familiar with that back in 2001, back in the summer of 2001, mm-hmm. well, it rained, it rained, rained, and it caught everybody off guard. Those people, they were unprepared because they, they, it wasn't in their experience that that area even flooded. Like the medical center, it wasn't in their experience that that area actually flooded. But that was, wasn't was within the 20-year flood period. They just hadn't re- experienced it. Okay. You know, but if you do a little research, Houston used to be a swamp. Most of Houston was swamp. So it has a great chance of flooding at any given period. So that's anywhere in, in that particular region. Yeah. Now, you have some areas that are higher than others, but you have to do your research and say, is this area prone to flooding within any period of time? Not just this year, not just last year, but within 20 or 30 years has this area ever flooded. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, that's new information for me. I guess that's why it's <laughs> humid there, because it used to be a swamp. Yeah, uh, it, it used so- to be a swamp. A lot of Houston used to be just swamp land. Wow. And that's why it came not water. Right. And that's why you have the mosquitoes that you have here, because that's, that's what they do. <laughs> There's the land. Well, I know we're getting ready to get to this next seven minutes before we close out. Okay. Anything to add about what a business owner should know, either a small or medium-sized business should know about insurance? Well, what a small, medium-sized business owner should know is that you should seek to have some type of insurance in, 
in place to protect yourself against the lawsuit. And that's basically what commercial insurance does. It protects the business owner from the possibility of a lawsuit. Now, your minimal coverage that you should seek to have is general liability because you are performing a service for someone else And you want to ensure that in the performance of your duty or your business, that if an injury takes place or property damage takes place, that that person is covered. I mean, that's just doing your due diligence to make to looking out for the welfare, not only your business, but that person that you work for. And in most cases on a small business, it's a great likelihood that your business may be the type of business that may have a, uh, that you'll be able to buy insurance at minimal limits, a minimal uh, premium, which is about $1,000 or $1,500 a year. Okay. That may not be the case in most businesses, but for um, people that do, that do carpet cleaning, janitorial work, landscaping, and things like that, you know, maid services and things like that, the cost of the ins- general liability insurance is, can be very affordable. Okay. In closing, real quick, someone mentioned here about surety bond. Is that a separate policy, or can the person get surety? Sure, surety bonds. Are, it's a separate type of coverage, but we have that available also. And basically, what a surety bond is says it basically just says I'm going to perform a job, and I have a bond to, that's in place, so that if I don't perform, the bond is in place to say where well, you can be compensated. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. It's just saying, I'll do what I, I'm going to do exactly what I said I was going to do. But in the event that I don't do it, I have a bond in place that says, if if you have any type of uh, occurrence where you lose money because of it, the bond is in place to compensate you for that. Okay. Now, by the same token, that's why bonds are so hard to get in, most, in a lot of cases, because a bond company is not in business to lose money. Wow. So they have, they have what underwriting uh, guidelines to ensure them if they do extend a bond to a company, then this company is going to have all the uh, criteria in place to almost guarantee that that won't be a loss. Okay. It's almost like getting a loan, really, to get a bond. And for the larger bonds, your smaller bonds, your smaller bonds won't require as much underwriting, but your larger bonds will require you to have financials. They will require you to have, they're going to run credit on you. They want to know if you're bondable, if you've performed that type of task before. So it's a, not a difficult underwriting process, but it can be really, uh, what's a good word for it? They have strict underwriting guidelines. Okay. How can they contact you if they have some questions or looking for insurance? Sure. My uh, number here is 281-257-0252. Or if they want to email me, my email address is Roscoe, and that's spelled R O S C O E, at Harrison, and, and that's spelled H A I R S T O E N, associates, spelled out with an S, dot com. Okay, and what's that telephone number again? 281 257 0252. Great. Well, Roscoe, I really appreciate you coming on the air to talk about commercial insurance and mm-hmm. the liabilities to the business. And, again, many, many thanks to you. I really appreciate it. No problem, Tim. I look forward to it. If you need me again, just give me a call. Great. Thank you again, Roscoe Mason with Harrison Insurance in Spring, Texas, right? Which is Yes, sir. So far, Houston is just a suburb of north of Houston. Thank you. I really appreciate it again. And, everyone, have a great day. All right, Tim. Thank you, Roscoe. Uh, Okay. Again, it's been another production of the Apple Capital Group. You can download this episode on iTunes or Podfeed or Podcast or on Blog Talk Radio. If you like this episode, share with friends and family, Google Plus it. Also, highlights of this interview would be available on blog.applecapitalgroup. Again, it's blog.applecapitalgroup. If you're looking for a small business loan, check us out on our main website at www.applecapitalgroup.com. Another production of Apple Capital Group. Thank you for listening to the program this morning, and have a great Friday. Good day. Have a great day. Thank you.
Blog